When deciding what I was going to do for a background on my 245 gallon South American cichlid tank that we featured in last week's video, I was kind of debating on whether to do another DIY background or purchase a background from one of the many online suppliers. In the end, I decided to do the DIY background that you see here. So as promised in that video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made it. So let's go ahead and walk through the materials list. So the first thing you're going to need is closed cell styrofoam. I generally get this at the Home Depot, but you can find this at any of your local hardware stores. Just make sure to get the closed cell foam and not regular styrofoam because the closed cell foam is water resistant while the regular styrofoam will hold water. You're also going to need barbecue sticks, uh, which you can use to help attach and hold anything that you do attach to your background. Also, you are going to need some Gorilla Glue, a utility knife to score the actual background itself to cut it. We are going to be using pond foam for this application. Uh, the version that I am using is the Aquascape Professional Waterfall Foam Sealant. This does require a foam gun to use, uh, which would be an additional $40 to $50 if you didn't already have it. But there are some other pond foams that you can use which don't require the gun. Some silicone in order to attach the background to your tank. And to paint the background, we're going to be using the Krylon Fusion All-in-One. So I have found this paint to be both fish safe and to be safe with the styrofoam. Some spray paint brands can actually degrade the styrofoam, which wouldn't be good for this application. So definitely check out the spray paint that you're using before you go ahead and add water and fish to your tank. So before we start building our background, here's a quick summary of the materials list. It's now time to start cutting our foam. So this particular piece, we are gonna need a 26 inch by 24 inch piece. So you're just going to want to take your tape measure and measure both of the dimensions. And make a mark where you want to start your cut. So you're just going to want to run your utility knife right along the edge here. All you're going to need to do after that is just go ahead and snap it off. So now you'll just need to go ahead and repeat this process for the remaining parts of the background. After you've cut out all of your foam pieces, you are going to want to do a test fit to make sure that your pieces do fit into the tank correctly. So if your tank does have center braces like mine does, you are going to need to go ahead and cut it in half and then just make sure all of the pieces fit correctly and you can get them into the tank once you have it built. At this point, you are going to want to cut the holes in the styrofoam for the overflows. So to cut the holes for the overflows, I basically just lined up the uh, styrofoam like it would be in the tank and then uh, just do an outline of the hole and then I uh, really just cut it a little bit bigger than that outline just to make sure we had room. And also you want to think about other things that you may have in the tank such as power heads and cut the holes out for those. Um, in this case, I am running a J-Bow power head and I didn't measure that power head and make a slot for that as well. In order to add some depth to our background, we're going to go ahead and cut some slits out of the scrap foam. And that's just the same process, just uh, line the part up and uh, go ahead and slit it with your knife. So let's go ahead and attach the pieces we did to make the depth for our background. So all you're going to want to do is trace out an outline either with your knife or with a marker of where you want to put the strips. To help with adhesion, you do want to put holes in both sides of the foam that you're going to attach. Uh, so I like to use the barbecue stick for this. So you just want to poke a bunch of holes in it. Uh, making sure to do the strip as well as the foam itself. So let's go ahead now and attach our pieces. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is just run a nice bead of Gorilla Glue. You're just going to want to lay your pieces on top. Cutting off any excess. So now comes the barbecue steaks. You're just going to want to stick the barbecue steaks into your form. So we're going to go ahead and get to the fun part of this project now which is spraying the spray foam. 
Uh, you can do this at the same time while your Gorilla Glue is drying. It won't affect the Gorilla Glue at all. So we are looking for a wood pattern on this. Uh, so we're going to try to go in some straight lines. Well, there we have it. We just finished spraying our spray foam. According to the bottle itself, the cure time is about 30 minutes, but I generally do give it uh, at least a few hours to even overnight, depending on what time I do it. And then obviously you want to make sure you don't get any gaps. So I see some spots I want to get. So you just come back and before it dries, just kind of get some of these spots here. Now that our spray foam is cured, let's go ahead and start painting. So we're just going to start out with the brown. Uh, so we're just going to go, uh, give it, obviously give it an even coat. And then also one thing I do like to do is I like to add a little bit of texture. Uh, so what I'll normally do is take like a lighter color paint, like a tan color, and I'll take a black. And then after it's dry, I'll go ahead and paint uh, from a little bit further distance away, just kind of give it kind of a speckly look to it. So here's what the panel will look like once it's painted. You can see the different textures of different darker browns, lighter browns, and a little bit of the black. All right, so we now have our background painted and our background dry. So let's go ahead now and we'll start the installation process. We're just going to take our panel here and put a nice quantity of silicone on it, uh, making sure to cover the outside, inside, and especially around any of the holes just to make sure we get good adhesion. And then very carefully, we're going to go ahead and put that into our tank. So just uh, in respect to the holes, you want to make sure you have the holes lined up correctly. And we'll go ahead and uh, just adhere it. Make sure, you know, this I had to use a little bit of a hammer, like very lately tap it into place. but that should be it. And then obviously we're gonna repeat that for all of the remaining panels. And then we're gonna go ahead and let the silicone cure for at least a day, probably even two, uh, depending on how much you use. So just wait for the vinegar smell to dissipate. And then uh, once that's all set, you do wanna fill in any gaps. So if you didn't go all the way to the edge with your uh, spray foam, uh, you'd wanna spray foam in any gaps and also spray foam around uh, stuff like your overflows and anything going into the tank just to make sure you've got it looking all nice and tidy. And then obviously uh, you are going to want to use a little bit of paint to uh, clean that up and make it match the rest of the uh, background that you've already made. Once everything's cured and everything's dry, you can go ahead and finish the remainder of your aquascape and setting up the remainder of your tank.